Now let me take a few minutes to get you on the inside scoop. Some of the really secret secrets. I was going to say dirty little secrets, but they're really not very dirty of the calligraphy world. How do those calligraphers get everything to come out just exactly right? Well, practice, 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 but you already know that. Here's another secret that you really need to know about, and that is the light table or the light board. You've been watching me do all of my exercises so far with a simple piece of frosted uh, milk colored plexiglass on a plain old board, a brick, a stack of books would work. That's, I do that so that you don't feel like you have to go out and buy some fancy table or equipment to get started doing your calligraphy. You can do it with something just that simple. Glass would work as well. It's more breakable, of course, but uh, glass, plexiglass. And one of the tricks that all of us calligraphers use is tracing. So you're, you really are going to want either a light table or just stick a light bulb underneath here. That's good enough. If you can get access to some kind of light table like or light board like this, this is a good idea. This is LED lit so that you can trace things. Now, I have a piece of practice here. This is my rough sketch of a quote from Tolkien. I was thinking the other day, well, what would be the perfect, you know, subject matter? A scripture verse is great in, in uh, Gothic, any old quote, and of course, Lord of the Rings, that's very Gothic-ish, don't you think? So this is a quote from Tolkien, and this is my rough sketch. Now, I, I, some people, if they saw it, they would say, rough sketch, it looks pretty good, you know, that kind of thing. They're trying to be nice, butter me up, that kind of thing. But really, if you start looking very carefully, you can say, oh yeah, I see what you mean. This row of type kind of sags a little bit, a little bit small there, and there's some spacing issues, some angle issues. This is what I would do, and it's what most professional calligraphers do when they're going to produce their masterpiece. You do it not only once, maybe twice, maybe three times, and then you get a light table, tracing each time and making corrections. Does that make sense? So if I were doing this again, I would say, for instance, the gap between this I and this S is too wide. That's a correction I would make. In fact, the gap between the N and the O is a little bit too wide. Uh, this sags down. So I may even go ahead and mark these things. Way down here, there's a really bad gap. While I'm on the subject of gaps and so forth, let me mention that one of the most important aspects, characteristic features of all calligraphy is letter spacing. How much space do you, do you put between each letter? And please understand that it is, it is not a matter of mathematics or measuring. It's an eyeball thing. You, you want each word to have a uniform grayness. Can I use that term? You don't want some parts of the word looking dark and other parts of the word looking light because there's too much gap and so forth. So you're going to use your eye to make sure that the letters are spaced the right distance from each other. So, in fact, sometimes you're actually going to scrunch, squeeze up a letter, make it take up less space so that you can achieve this evenness, this even effect. Does that make sense? Other times you may want to stretch out a letter just a little bit so that you have this, this, this feature going on where the, each word is a uniform gray, a uniform darkness from beginning to end. And it, then it's not only the space between letters, but the space between words as well. And the space between lines of type. How much, how much space do you put between each of these? Well, again, that's your call. That's your judgment. I'm pretty happy with the space that's here. I like, I like the line spacing there. I'm fine with that. Uh, but there are a lot of other details in here that need work. So if, I, if this was my practice sheet, then I would take my final sheet, let's say I'm going to go this way with it, and I'm going to tape it down so it doesn't move. And then I would pick up my pen, let's see if I have one just about this, the right width for that. And I can use my earlier practice sheet now as my, as my pen starter, do you see that? Because this, this is just practice. And then I would start tracing the letters. Not tracing perfectly, but making, in fact, little tiny improvements all the way along. Does that make sense? So I want you to understand that that's the way most calligraphers, now there are many, of course, in the world, there are many master, master, masters that, that 
perhaps don't do, have to do some of this, but most of us mere mortals <laughs> have to have a, a support structure like this in place so that we can still produce a piece that looks absolutely perfect, but we use a light table, a tracing table to accomplish it. So let's see, I would look at this letter T and say, is that r just where I want it? And in this case, it, I think it is. So I'm gonna trace that letter T, again, making little improvements on the first one as I go. And then the next question, is that the, l the next word? Is that where I want it? And, and the answer in this case is no. So let me, rather than, I could just move the letter I, I wanna move it to the left, or I can do this. I can pick up my paper, pull the tape off, and then reposition it so this next letter is where I want it. Am I making sense to you? So instead of draw, making my tracing uh, make the corrections, I simply pick up the paper. Now that letter I is right where I want it in relationship to the letter T at the end of the word it. I think you're getting this. It's all very, very common sense. And let's see, that I, the dot on that I was a little low, so I'm going to raise it up. Likewise, etc., etc., etc. I would make changes. Now I need to move this over again in order to get the S in the right position. But I won't bore you with those details. Does that make sense? I hope that really frees you up a lot to see, oh, well, if I do that, then I can, I can produce a masterpiece too. And that's exactly the way I want you to think. You may, you may even go through this tracing process, as I said, two or three times. Just one other element I'm going to mention, and that is where do your, where do your lines start and end up? Let me turn this light off so we can just see it in normal light. Here we go. I felt like this quote, for some reason, very intuitive, I felt like it would look cool if it was flush right. That is, if all the lines of type ended in, in a straight line over here, that means I would start the lines at various points. And this, I just took a, my best guess when I was doing this rough sketch. So as you can imagine, using our, our tracing technique, I would move each line over so that they would in fact all end up exactly the right place. Does that make sense? I hope it does. And this should open the door to a, a lot of really, really, really fun calligraphy for you.